Hi, my name is Ken Sylvia, and I'm the director of Next Step Mentoring here at Youth for Christ Central Valley. And in this training, I'm hoping to help you wrestle with the issue of how do I be a person of faith and live out my faith and share my faith while at the same time respecting the laws of church and state. I wanna share with you four values that have really helped the Next Step Mentoring program be successful and staying true to the Youth for Christ mission and vision while at the same time obeying the laws. And this first value is a principle of trust and respect. And basically what this says is that all of life's choices boil down to these two things, trust and respect. I may not like you or I may not agree with you, but if I can trust you and respect you, then I have a hard time arguing with what, what it is you're doing. And really it starts with unconditional love. I work with a lot of kids who I don't agree with. And sometimes, honestly, they're knuckleheads. But how I make them feel, how I treat them, how I talk to them, how I, how I interact with them, they know that I love them and they begin to trust and respect what it is I'm seeing and who it is I am and what it is I stand for over time. Well, you know, in fact, even uh, the book of James talks about that our, our faith without deeds is really pointless. Um, and in, in all of what I do, in all of what I teach with my mentors, my other staff, we talk about how, and in, in for, in for example, John 10.10, 10, that Jesus came to give life to the fullest. And as we try to impart these things into our kids' hearts and minds, what I find is, is that the foundational issues that really keep them from hearing start to break down because they trust and respect who it is we are and what it is we're saying. So the first value is the, is the principle of trust and respect. The second value is that of two-way relationship. It's a two-way street or two-way relationship. What that means is that like with, for example, your spouse or your significant other or your best friend, when you first met them, odds are you slowly got to know each other. You asked them questions, favorite sports team, color, food, restaurant, etc. right? You don't just show up and say, here's what I believe and here's how it's going to work and that's the end of the story. But you show up and you get to know each other over time and you take the time to, to slowly become more intimate with each other. You know, people I just meet for the first time, I don't share my deepest fears. But my wife, on the other hand, she knows a lot more about me. When it comes to mentoring, and when it comes to this idea of sharing our faith, if we show up as a Bible thumper, yeah, you know what, we're gonna get in trouble and we're gonna break the laws and we're gonna be disrespectful. But if over time, we simply ask, well, what do you believe? Or what are you doing for Christmas? Or wow, you're going through a really tough time right now. You know, could you tell me, how does your, your faith or do you even have a faith? I mean, it, how does that play into you making sense of all this drama in your life? Those are very good mentoring style questions that while some people may not agree with, they're not breaking the law. So the first value is that of trust and respect, which goes into the value of the two-way relationship. And by the way, when it comes to the two-way relationship, it's give and take. So you not only are you asking them questions, but you're sharing experiences from your own life. And when people know that you're gonna be honest and vulnerable, they too will be honest and vulnerable. Now, value number three is about caring for the whole person. And every person has five elements or aspects to who they are. You have their, their physical, their mental, their emotional, their social or their relational aspects, and then finally, their spiritual. Now, if a child was to come to you and was to say, I'm starving, I'm hungry, please give me food. And you were to say, you know, I'm sorry, I don't believe in food. There's a separation of food and state. You, they'd be like, that's, that's crazy, that's cruel and evil. What's your problem? If someone came to you crying in tears that their, their boyfriend or girlfriend had just broken up with them or that their mom, their mom and dad just got divorced, you wouldn't say, oh, I, there's a separation of emotions and state. I can't talk to you about that. That would be horrible to even consider. So when a child has issues that deal with spiritual aspects, as a good mentor, it is your responsibility to carefully help them uncover what do they believe about the bigger picture. Now, I work a lot in schools, and so I have to kind of walk that line very carefully. And, and the question I ask when it comes to the spiritual stuff is, what is the bigger picture? What is your belief about a higher power or, or, or God? And what I often find happens is they, in return, will ask, well, I don't know, no, 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 but what do you believe? And then I have a chance to share it. Well, you know, here's my story. 
Here's why I believe in Christ. Here's, here's where this comes from. Here's in my own life, the struggles I've gone through, and here's how my faith has helped me. Now, I realize there are some people who would argue that religion is bad, except for the vast majority of all scientific research will show religion, faith, and hope in something bigger is actually good for the human soul and the human body. My point being is that in an appropriate relationship, a two-way street, practicing the value of trust and respect, principle, principle number three or value number three, caring for the whole person is now simple because I've got the relational piece, the trust and the respect pieces all covered. Finally, value number four is let God be God. I realize that, you know what? Not everybody gets to be a Billy Graham. Um, in my program, I talk a lot with my mentors about being seed planters. I wish I could tell you that I lead hundreds of kids to Christ every year and there's these revival happening in Santa Sauce County, but the reality is it takes time, it takes relationship, and I'm not God. I don't know what I really believe about all that kind of stuff because it can be gray area sometimes. And it's, it's hard when you work with a kid and where do they really stand and at what point are they really saved? And there's really philosophical and theological questions being asked. But let me put it to you simply. And even Paul said this in the Bible. Some are here to water, some are here to plant, some are here to, to harvest. In, in our program, we are seed planters. We are waterers where other people have already planted seeds. And with some knuckleheads, we even do a little bit of pruning. We actually do a lot of pruning in our program but we don't always get to harvest. I can think of in the last maybe two or three years, maybe a total of 10 kids who have come to Christ through a program because of a natural relationship. And what I wanna to say to you is as a mentor, be okay with the fact that God is God. And God was here before you were here and God will be here after we're, we're all gone. God is God. Take that pressure and that responsibility off of yourself. Yes, it's important to lead people to Christ but it's not so important that you break the law. It's not so important that you be disrespectful. It's not so important that you are manipulative. Relax, take a breath, enjoy this kid. Enjoy whoever it is you're working with. Let God be God. Let me tell you a quick story. One day about a year ago, I was on the corner of Hatch and Mitchell and Series at Starbucks, meeting with a buddy of mine. And I was really struggling with my mentoring program and. I felt like we really weren't, you know, being very evangelistic or reaching out to kids or doing the, the whole faith thing very well. And I, I kid you not, I heard God's voice and he said, Ken, you are a light in the darkness. Without you, there's no light there. And even now I get a little emotional thinking about that because I would bet thousands of dollars that I heard God's voice. I know exactly, I know I, know I did for a fact. And yet how do I reconcile the hands not being raised in service or the prayers not being prayed at lunch. And I don't know, I don't have that answer. But what I can tell you is that God reassured me that day, he is God and I am not. Thank you for watching this. Before you leave, let me recap. Number one, trust and respect. Value number two, it's a two-way street. Value number three, care for the whole person, including the spiritual aspect. And value number four, let God be God. Thank you for watching this. If you have any other questions, comments, or, or, or if you'd like to do an, a, a longer training, please, the details are on the screen. Have a great day and God bless.